Frugal people never spend money. Or do they? There is a weird rumor going around that says frugality <laughs> means you never spend money. We frugal people actually do spend money, but when we spend it, we tend to spend it very deliberately. We've thought long and hard about it, and we're usually spending money on something that will help us to save money. Let's take a look at 30 items that Hope and I have spent in order to actually save money. But first, if you don't know us, I'm Hope. And I'm Larry. And this is Under the Median, where every week we talk about practical frugality. Item number one that frugal people tend to buy, that is reusable water bottles. These are our reusable water bottles. The manufacturer actually sent these to us a few months ago as a free sample, but we've talked about the Hydro H2O bottles before. We accidentally gave it a road test, a really hard <laughs> test in the middle of summer. It was 100 degrees in the shade and Larry left his outside uh, in the blazing sunlight for eight hours. Uh, we had put uh, water and, and some ice, ice in it. And some ice mm -hmm. in there. And amazingly, after that eight hours out in the hot sun, I brought it in. It had plenty of ice still left. And even two days later, it still had <laughs> ice. So we can really recommend these Hydro H2O bottles. And we'll leave a link in the description of this video if you would like to try one out. And that is an affiliate link. Second thing we tend to buy, thrift store clothing. Everything that we are wearing came from a local used or thrift store. You can get high quality clothing at a fraction of the price that it is brand new by sh carefully shopping thrift stores and used stores in your area. Another way to save quite a bit of money is to buy generic brands instead of main brands. While you're buying generic, you're gonna save a lot of money, particularly on food items, because there's no advertising dollars going into those items. And a lot of those items mm -hmm. are still made at the same places yep. that the major brands are made at. Number four, this may seem counterproductive, but we tend to spend money on meal prep containers. Now, Larry and I will admit we have our fair share of leftover like tubs of margarine <laughs> and stuff like that, the empty tubs that we repack food in. But we also have some meal prep containers that I got on clearance years ago at Kroger for I think they were 50 cents or a dollar. Our kids carried them to high school every Friday to their co-op classes for four years and that was what I packed their lunches in. The reason that we spend money on the meal prep containers is because generally we're not going out to eat. No, we are taking our lunch to work when we leave in the morning. Energy efficient light bulbs, the LED bulbs that they sell mostly at the stores now will save you a lot of money over the old incandescent yeah. bulbs. An incandescent bulb that might have put out at that time 60 watts mm -hmm. of light into your room can now be done at a fraction of that amount mm -hmm. of power with an LED. Generally, they're about 12 watts as opposed to 60. So you're saving a lot of money by buying LED light bulbs. These next two are like some of my favorite things in the the whole wide world. You guys have to tell me in the comment section if you agree. The first of those two items is a crock pot slash slow cooker. I absolutely love them. I have four of them all the way from the small ones that you see that people put dip in for parties to the largest one that you can buy. Crock pots are amazing. You can yeah. put items in there, put it on low for eight hours, walk out the door, come home from work, and your dinner is hot and it's ready to eat. One of the reasons this is important, of course, is it keeps you from going through the drive through or to a restaurant on yes. the way home from work to pick up dinner because you know it's ready to go when you walk in the door and you get home from work. And the second thing to remember is that crock pots sip energy. Another kind of pot that will save you a lot of money in cooking, and we've actually done a video where we compared a bunch of different kinds and we found this to be the very best one, and that is your instant pot. Those are actually a pressure cooker, and they will cook your food very quickly, very efficiently, and much cheaper on your power consumption. I love my instant pot so much. Less expensive cell phones. We tend to hang on to our cell phones for longer. I replaced my iPhone 6S just a year or two ago, and the only reason that I replaced it is because they stopped offering any support for the iPhone 6S, so that then it was it. time to move up. But when we purchase cell phones, we don't generally purchase brand new. We have a company called backmarket.com that we have repeatedly purchased electronic items from all the way from computers to iPads mm -hmm. 
-hmm. to our cell phones and we've been super duper happy with them and you buy a few models back and it costs you a fraction of what it would cost brand new. When back market says that an item is in excellent condition on their website, it really is in excellent condition when you get the item in your home. It will be without marks. There's no no degrading of any kind on the on the object. It is amazing. They do a great job, great place to buy used items from. And speaking of cell phones, there's something else related to cell phones that we refuse to pay as much as everybody else does, and that is our monthly cell phone contract. Now, that is exactly why Larry and I switched to Mint Mobile over a year ago. Mint Mobile is our partner for this video. $15 a month, that's what I pay for my cell phone plan. It took me 15 minutes to switch from my previous provider over to Mint Mobile, and I did get to keep my previous cell phone number. It's that easy, guys, and I am, believe me, not a techie person. With any of Mint's plans, you're going to get unlimited talk and text. You'll get their nationwide 5G network, and you will also get mobile hotspot data. Now, that was super important to Larry and I just a couple of weeks ago. It was Mint Mobile to the rest. You. Here's the story. 30 minutes before we were due to premiere one of our YouTube videos, our home internet service went out. It was here one minute, gone the next. No explanation. And there was no time for us to try to figure out what in the world the problem was. Now we tried to like reset it, do things like that. It was not a problem with us. It was a problem with the internet provider. So we both grabbed our cell phones. We hooked up to our mobile hotspot data on Mint Mobile, and then yeah. we tethered our phones to our computers and here is the photo that shows us sitting <laughs> out on our front porch. We were able to attend the premiere live with all of you and you never knew what had happened behind the scenes, but Mint Mobile, thank you so much. That was super helpful to have that hotspot data. Now, if you are ready to learn more about Mint Mobile, this is a great time to do it because right now you can try any of their cell phone plans for $15 a month for the first three months. You wanna scan that QR code right between Larry and I, or you can use our very special link, which is down at the bottom of the screen right there. It's mintmobile.com forward slash under the median. There'll be a link also to Mint Mobile all the way at the top of the description of this video. Secondhand furniture can really save a lot of money. Mm -hmm. For one thing, Older furniture was made so much better than the current line of furniture is being made. For one, you're not gonna get furniture that's made with a particle board that they're currently using for new furniture. And you're probably gonna get something that's made out of hardwood if you go mm -hmm. old enough. So mm -hmm. used furniture, it can last you longer and you're gonna spend a lot less for it. You look at secondhand stores, you can also look at estate sales. Uh, look on a Facebook marketplace, yeah. or you can even look, guys, at the side of the road. We have, yes, <laughs> yes. indeed, found old, <laughs> solid wood furniture cast off at the side of the road. We've not been afraid of doing a little <laughs> bit of DIY work on it to bring it up yeah, to fair. specs if it needs to be refinished or there's a little problem, maybe it needs to be repainted. That's okay. It's still going to cost you a lot less. Here's something else that we're not afraid to get secondhand, and that is books. Yeah. Secondhand books, if you haven't read the book, doesn't matter if it's brand new That's from right. the bookstore. That's right. what I need to, to ask you all. Look at your local library. Yes, you can borrow books from your library, but sometimes you really do want to have them on your personal bookshelf. Uh, all libraries generally have a corner where they are selling books uber duper yes. cheap yes. that um, that they're no longer going to have on their shelves or they've been mm -hmm. donated to the library. But secondhand bookstores, some of our favorite places in the whole wide world to visit because generally they are small and they were locally owned. So we get to su support a small local entrepreneur while feeding our book need <laughs> at the same time for less money. It is a win-win-win situation, guys. One of my habits in reading <laughs> is to take a book and read it over a lot longer period of time than the library will allow you to check a book out mm -hmm. for. And this might be a reference book. It might be a book that we're going to want to return to every so often and look up information on. Those are books that are nice to have in your own library, and you can pick those up used for so much less. 
We really like using cloth napkins instead of using paper towels. Cloth napkins are incredibly inexpensive, and once again, you can find them readily on the used market, and you might pick yourself up maybe a used tablecloth or two at the same time as you're picking up your napkins, because I personally love vintage <laughs> tableware, including not only the tablecloths, but also the napkins. And you can pick up a lot of that stuff at estate sales. Sure. You can get some really good tablecloths and furniture, both at estate sales. So that's another way that you can look for those. Another item that's very important is DIY cleaning supplies. This might be something like vinegar and baking soda yeah. that you can use instead of buying all the high quality, high cost products that are at your grocery store, get, get something that you can just put together yourself and you can use it five or six different ways, five or six different functions that the other thing at the store may be only designed to be used for one purpose only. You can save a lot of money by creating your own DIY cleaning products. Buying in bulk. As with everything, you need to do the math. Sometimes if you're buying a product from a traditional grocery store, uh, you're going to find it for less than the bulk price if it's on sale and if you have a coupon for it. But oftentimes buying in bulk in larger packages, say 10, 15, 25, or even 50 pound bags, you're going to get that product for much, much less per ounce. Larry and I take bulk buying trips to an yes. Amish community, which is about an hour from us. We do it twice a year. And in fact, if you're interested in seeing one of those bulk buying trips, we are getting ready to go mm -hmm. on a bulk buying excursion tomorrow. So make sure that you are subscribed to Under the Medium. When you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification button because then YouTube is going to let you know when we drop our next video. And make sure while you're doing that, by the way, guys, would you please scroll up and hit the thumbs up button. Give this video a like. That really helps us with the YouTube algorithm. But we will be posting a video in the next couple of weeks about our bulk buying excursion. We'll let you know what we found and we'll also let you know how much the prices went up from the last time that we bought six months ago. I think it's amazing when you compare the price mm -hmm. of what we'll pay for let's yep. say a 50 pound bag of oatmeal. If you compare that to let's say a two pound can that you would buy at the store we're going to be saving a lot of money so we will update you pretty soon on what we do tomorrow at the Amish store. Something else that we get too are reusable grocery bags. Those cloth bags, you can find them everywhere. And so I do have a little bit of a caveat on this one. Sometimes we don't even buy the reusable <laughs> bags. We wait, we go to like those community type events and businesses there will have yes. the reusable cloth bags that they will just give you while yes. you're at the event. So we've collected a number of them. We actually haven't paid anything for them. Now in some locales, it is mandatory that you bring your own bag Yes. to the grocery store. That's not mandatory yet in the state of Illinois. Uh, I think it is in California and some other places, maybe on the East Coast. Yeah. You can tell us in the comments section, is it mandatory in your area that you bring your own bags to the grocery store? But we really like to have those reusable ones because they are strong and you can haul pretty much everything in them. And once again, maybe we've paid a couple bucks for them and a lot of them times we've got them for free. And they last a long <laughs> time. Quality shoes is another item that Hope and I are really strong at. We don't mind paying a little bit more money for a pair of shoes that yeah. will last maybe three to five years or more. In fact, I've got some shoes that are about 20 years old that I've bought from years ago that I only wear for dress up. It's amazing how much you can save by spending a little bit more on the quality material and workmanship that goes into a good pair of shoes. Number 16, in case you are keeping count, National Park Passes. This is another matter of yeah. do the math. Larry and I were traveling out west one year and realized we were going to three national parks. Rather than pay the daily rate to go to those parks, it was much less expensive to buy the yearly pass, pay once, and then we could go as often as to as many parks as we wanted yeah. to while we were out west. But if you live anywhere near a national park, this is a great deal for you. But once again, we keep throwing in these, but do this first. <laughs> if you are 55 plus, make sure you check around because oftentimes those parks 
park passes are less for you and you're going to get a great deal and a discount on them. They've had these passes out for like 30 or 40 yep. years now because I can remember going on vacations when I was a kid. We would get a Golden Eagle Pass that would cover all the national parks for the amount of time that we were out on our vacation, maybe as long as three weeks. So that was some great savings. After mentioning senior citizen prices, we're going all the way the other direction for this next tip, and that yeah. is cloth diapers. We cloth diapered all four of our children, and we saved thousands of dollars on the cost of disposable diapers. And while you're at it, let's give our next tip, and that is to make your own reusable diaper wipes. I did it, mm -hmm. and it's super easy, guys. Another item that can save you a lot of money is open box electronics. Now, there's a lot of stores like Best yeah. Buy that they might have a table out where they'll have a whole bunch of items that have been returned. They've gone through them. They've tested the items. They make sure they're working okay. They usually even provide a warranty on those items. And another thing, too, is just buy used electronic items uh, at, at your stores. You don't have to have the latest and greatest. I always went one or two items of technology behind what was the most popular in order to save money and still get good high quality electronics. This next one can be summed up in three letters. R-O-I, yes. return on investment. Yes. It is energy efficient appliances. You figure out how long it's going to take you to save enough money to pay yourself back on that energy efficient appliance. One of the things you have to remember about the newer energy efficient appliances is that not only do they use less energy, but oftentimes they come with a rebate, maybe even from your utility company. The last time we purchased a, we replaced our like 45 year old <laughs> chest freezer. Oh my God. We figured it was You're 1976 old. and we replaced yeah. it in like 2020. So I haven't done that math, but it was old, <laughs> very, very old. old. Yeah. It looked very bad and <clears throat> it was using a lot of energy. We replaced it and the model that we got was energy efficient. We got a rebate from our utility company yeah. for purchasing it yeah. and we also got a rebate on our taxes for purchasing it you need to make sure you check out all of the caveats before you do it to make sure that you are basically checking all the boxes before you purchase something thinking you'll get money back in your taxes and you may not if that maker model is not included but be sure to check around and make sure that you're purchasing what you can uh, purchase at the price you want to pay, and you're also maybe getting some of those extra things back. What's kind of amazing about that newer freezer that we bought, it yeah. was about three times the size yes, it was. of that 1976 freezer, and we were using less energy mm -hmm. to keep items frozen in there. So we really, yeah. really went ahead on that item. Rain barrels. We had one for a long time. We collected rainwater and used it. When we had a garden, we watered the garden with it and watered the plants with it out back. Speaking of plants, plant-based meals can save you a lot of money. And right now, it's especially <laughs> true with meat prices going yeah. up the way that they are. There's a lot of alternatives that you can use instead of buying a lot of meat for your meals. And you can save a lot of money by doing plant-based meals. This next one is actually one of Larry's favorites, and he was not a fan when I got it, guys, I will say. That is a handheld vacuum cleaner. I actually did not pay for this. I found it on one of those um, Facebook groups where people yeah. give stuff to other people that they no longer want. The lady had purchased this handheld vacuum and she used it like twice. She just didn't like the way that it emptied. I'm like, yes, me, me, me. I will come get it from your house. <laughs> she lived like eight blocks from our house, which really helped my decision solidifying my mind very, very quickly. I brought it home and Larry's like, I don't know how this is going to work. And now... I use it all the time. In fact, I actually use it with a power station, a little 300 watt lightweight portable power station. I'll take that thing all over the house and never have to plug it in because it runs off of the power station. It only uses about 106 watts and it picks up everything. I mean, all the little loose crumbs and pieces of bread and different things that come out of our meals onto the floor, it'll pick that up in nothing flat. And I'm very impressed. I was so impressed with this. Bar soap. We tend to use bar soap rather than the liquid soap because the bar soap will last a lot longer when you compare it to yeah. the liquid soap. 
reusable K-cups, for you, those of you that have the, a K-cup dispenser, that can save you a lot of money. I remember we got a new uh, K-cup dispenser at work, and I bought a couple of those generic uh, filters yep. that you could hand load. You just hand load yep. a, a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of coffee grounds in them, and then you can use them one time for each usage. And that'll save you a lot of money instead of having to buy the K-cups to put in there. That's right. We don't have a Carrig, but we do have one of the more traditional drip coffee makers. Yes. And speaking of that, here is our next point that we frugal people tend to spend money on those cone filters that are permanent or the basket filters that are permanent to put in our drip coffee makers. So we do not have to purchase the uh, filters that are made of paper. A digital programmable thermostat is highly recommended by different energy companies. This can mm -hmm. save you a lot of money. And this is especially true if both of you are working and you're away from the house for eight yeah. hours during the summertime, you can use the digital thermometer to turn up the temperature in your home while you're not there and have it turn it down a half an hour before you get home. Mm -hmm. So your home is nice and cool and very comfortable for you. Statistically, you can cut your energy costs by about 10%, but you have to actually program the programmable yes. thermostat yes, in order to realize <laughs> that 10% savings. Bulk spices can save you a lot yeah. of money then rather than buying the individual ones. If you get the larger ones, like the larger jars of cinnamon or whatever it is that you happen to be using, you can save a lot of money. And we love mm -hmm. our spices in our food. In-home workout equipment. Those resistance bands, very inexpensive, a three pound or a five pound weight to use while you are working out at home, also very inexpensive, or just taking walks or taking bike rides that cost you almost nothing after you have purchased your bicycle. Water saving shower heads can also mm -hmm. save you quite a bit of money when your family is cleaning up in yeah. the shower. These can take and run as much as maybe a third less water yeah. while you're cleaning up in the shower. They'll save you a lot of money in the long run. We have a lot more ideas, guys, of small frugal habits that will help you to save money. We've done a video on it. It's right over there. Go take a look.